want to point out is your recent searches. So we keep your last 20 searches. So if you're going into the MLS and for some reason you get out of your search, you can just go back and click on your last search. And you'll notice if you hover over this link, we'll give you a summary of the criteria you were searching for. So if you're struggling to find your search, you can very quickly and easily do that from here. Another module I want to point out is your saved searches module. We do allow you to save searches and I'll show you where you can save searches, but this is where you would uh, directly reference them from the home page. Now, each of these uh, modules have a couple of action items that you can do directly from the module. So you can, if you click on the subtraction sign, you'll notice that this recent searches is a very long module. So if I were to click on that subtraction sign, it actually just collapses the module so that you still have access to it. It's just not taking as much real estate on the page. You also uh, have the ability to move around the modules. So if I were to click on this plus icon, we were to move any of those modules, I could drag it to the exact location that I want to. Now this, this uh, home page does remember the changes, so you don't have to keep making them. You just make them the one time, and it will it'll, we'll remember it when you log in. You also can remove a module directly from this home page, so if you click on that X, it'll ask if you want to remove it. You can click on remove. Now let's say you didn't mean to remove that module. You want to add it back? Well, you can do so by clicking on this settings or sprocket icon at the very top. And this opens just some basic settings. And then you can turn back on the module. You can also turn on and off any modules uh, you don't utilize. There's another thing I want to mention on this screen as well. So you'll notice that the home page is currently in a dark mode. We try to um, give you guys that opportunity because Facebook and all that um, is utilizing the new dark mode. But if you want to change it to a light mode, you can change the dashboard theme at the very top, change it to a default mode, and then click on save and then it'll lighten up the screen a little bit. So it's just really your preference. If you prefer working in the dark mode, you can. If you prefer the light, you can do that as well. We're just gonna move that module up. Perfect. Now, again, with, you can customize this dashboard, or if you wanted to create a brand new dashboard, you could as well. So if we go up to the home icon at the top left and click on create new dashboard. So let's just say I wanna create a dashboard specifically for my prospecting. So I'm going to type in prospects at the very top. And something I want to notate is I'm going to leave this in a dashboard layout, or sorry, a tile layout. And then I'm just going to go ahead and turn off any modules that have nothing to do with my prospects. Once I'm ready, I'm going to go ahead and just save it. Now, one thing I want to notice, or what, that I want you to notice, is that these modules are exactly the same size. So this is that tile layout that I mentioned before. If we were to go back to our home dashboard, you'll notice that these modules expand however, however much the data is within. So it'll expand to um, however, um, however big the criteria is within. Let's go back to our prospects dashboard. And again, you'll notice now we have those modules accessible to us. If you want this dashboard to be the one that you click on or that opens up when you log in, you would just simply favorite that dashboard by uh, filling in that star at the very top. I know it may be difficult to see. You would just select that star and then every time you log in, this would be the dashboard that comes up. When you're ready to delete a dashboard, we can go ahead and refavorite our own. Perfect. When you're ready to delete a dashboard, you can select the one you would like to delete. Click on the sprocket icon at the very top, and then just cl click delete at the very bottom. So we allow you to delete any dashboards that you create. You can't, you can't delete our home dashboard just because you always have to have a dashboard selected, but you can create as many dashboards as you would like. Okay, now that we've gone over the dashboard, um, I want to go over this gray bar at the very top. This is what we like to call our navigation bar. So no matter where you are in the MLS, you will see this gray bar at the very top. So the first drop down is your searches. This has all of the searches available to you in the MLS. You have your open house search, agent office, uh, standard. We'll go th through a couple of those in a little bit. To the right of that, you have your listings. So this has everything to do with listing maintenance, where you enter listings, you can copy listings or view your listings. To the right of that, you have tax. So this, your new tax vendor is Remind, and if you were to click on this button, it opens you up to their site. So you have a direct link um, from our system. 
To the right of that, you have your carts. So think of these almost as like your agent carts, your shopping carts. You want to keep an eye on the, a number of specific listings. You can add those listings into a cart and you can monitor them. They won't be removed unless you physically remove them. Go back to our homepage. To the right of that is your contacts. Uh, we'll go, we'll dive into your contacts in a little bit. And then you have your links. So these have all of your single sign on links. Would you actually also have a module for us? So if we scroll down, you'll notice all of your third party vendors that you have access to will be available from this single sign on module. But if you're somewhere else in the MLS and you need to access it, you can just go to links and then single sign on. To the right of that, you have your admin menu. So this is where we're gonna be referencing uh, this menu a lot as we're going through the MLS. And you'll want to notate um, that this is where a lot of setup comes, that where you can set it up to save you time later when you're going through the MLS. We're going to go in and we're just going to modify our profile. Now, you'll notice that this is your profile. So this is what will show um, to other agents and your clients when you log in. So we have added a picture. You guys may not have your picture uploaded. How you can upload it just by clicking on upload picture at the very top. It'll have you choose a file directly uh, from your computer and you can upload your profile photo. Another thing that we allow you to do is add in a personal bio and I'll kind of show you where that comes in handy when um, other people will be viewing your profile. And if you also are multilingual, you can add in additional <coughs> languages at the very bottom. Now any other, of, any other information, whether maybe you moved and you want to change your address, that all goes through your membership, so that wouldn't be through Rapatoni. So if there's something wrong on this screen, you would probably want to either call the association or I think you guys have a widget directly from that Central Jersey MLS site. Once you're ready, you can just click on that View Your Profile link. You can just get a, pre you can just get a preview of what another agent would see or your client would see as well. Let's go ahead and go back to the home page. The last menu I want to point out, and almost the most important menu, is your help. So you have a lot of different options. You can have your online help, which basically is a keyword search. So you can type in anything you want and get step-by-step -step, um, directions through there. Right below that is your learning center. Can we click on that? Perfect. So this gives you three to seven minute videos of everything that we're going to go over today. So if this is the one thing you remember today, I'm happy because um, you'll be able to reference um, step by step everything we go through. And fun fact, it's actually Maddie who does all these videos, so you'll listen to her voice. <laughs> voice. <laughs> Alright, let's go back to our home page. Okay, let's go back to our help. And then we also, we're not going to click on it, but we also give you guys access to recorded webinars. So if you have an hour or a half an hour to spare, um, the recorded webinars will just dive into a specific feature. Right below that is our getting started guide. We can click on that. If you prefer to have an in-hand step-by-step guide of a couple of core features of the MLS, you can actually print this out. It's about 21 pages and it'll kind of just walk you through. It doesn't go through everything in the MLS, but it does give you some um, basic information that'll just get you started in the MLS. You can close out of this. And the last thing I want to point out on our help menu is our support center. So if you go to help, and then support center. This will be where you'll be able to contact our help desk. So if we click on contact support, you'll notice we have our phone number at the very top and you can also directly email our help desk from this screen. The benefit of, of emailing them directly from here is that we track all of your previous questions. So if you send in a question today, um, but then in six months you want to reference that previous question and what the answer was, you can go back to my previous questions and we keep track of all of those um, incidents. So um, you also can just send an email directly from your email, it's just however you prefer. Let's go back to our home screen. Perfect. Now, to the right of that, you'll notice our speed search bar, which we'll dive into in a few minutes. But to the right of that is your multi-session. Go ahead and click on it. Now this actually opens just a duplicate session of exactly the MLS. This comes into handy. Let's just say I'm working in carts. I'm going through checking on some listings. But my client gives me a call and they say, hey, can you search this address and give me, um, is there a hope in house this weekend? 
you can actually click on this multi-session and you can keep what you're working on but just get a fresh screen so that you can search for your client and then you can go right back to the carts and then you won't lose what you're working on all right let's dive into speed searching so this speed search bar is just a quick and easy way where you can input some criteria so first we're going to type in listing numbers if you enter more than one listing number, you just want to separate them by a comma. So you'll notice Maddie entered two listing numbers. And right here it gives you the sum of how many listings it will bring up. And then we can either press enter or you can click on that magnifying glass at the very top. And you'll notice it will bring those two listings up. In addition to searching with listing numbers, you can also just input an address. So if we were to put in 110 at Way, and then press enter on our keyboard. Now, if you only have one result that's going to come up, it's going to bring you directly to the full detail of the listing. And we'll go over the full detail um, in detail in a few minutes. You can also perform broader searches. So let's just say my client wants to live in Chesterfield. So I can type in Chesterfield. And that gives me 72 listings. Well, I don't really want to go through 72, 72 listings. And I, so I'm going to narrow it down to because I only want to see active. When you're pull, putting in multiple sets of criteria, you want to separate it with a semicolon. So I put in Chesterfield, semicolon, active, and then it'll bring up those five results. Another type of search that you can pull up is a more robust search, so we can clear that out. My client is looking for a residential property, so Maddie's going to type in resi. And then she's also looking for active listings, so I'm going to type in active and four plus beds and three to four baths and she doesn't really want to go over 400,000 so we're going to do 400,000 or less perfect we may want will you fill out a uh, resi at the very top there we go oh, sorry. No, that's okay so you'll notice you can narrow down your criteria and now we have 58 results that we can go through just directly from our speed search bar. Was there a semicolon in between? I just can't see. Yes, sorry. There is a semicolon between each part of criteria. Now, how did I know what to enter here? Um, you can click on this question mark icon at the very top. And we can open that up. This will give you a list of all the criteria and different um, sections that you can put in. So, it talks about beds, for example. You can put in BD, BDS, you can spell out bedrooms. There's a lot of different um, ways that you can type in information, and this is where you can uh, access what you can put in there. Once you get a hang of it, you'll find the criteria that you look for, and you'll just know those uh, specific uh, ways you can type that out. But for a start, you may want to pull this up to see all of the criteria you can input. You can close this out. All right, we're going to just go back to our home page. And we'll just wipe out this criteria at the very top. All right, now we're going to dive into standard searches. So if we click on searches at the very top, and then we click on standard, this just gives you a list of all of the fields that you have available to search for. So, yep, you can see there's tons of fields on this list. Now, one thing I want to notate is you'll notice that we automatically have residential <laughs> selected. So I'll show you where you can default that in a few minutes. Another thing I want you to notate is this additional criteria tab at the very top. You'll notice that we can actually click on it and it'll open us up to a long list of fields. If we go back to the general criteria screen, let's just select residential rental as well. You'll notice that that tab gets grayed out. This is because that additional criteria tab has uh, property type specific fields. So it, if you're going to do multiple cross property type, for all of those additional fields, you'd want to probably do an interactive map search, which I'll show you in a little bit. But for this example, we're just going to uncheck residential and do a singular property type. And we're just going to input some information. You'll notice as she types in the county, it filled out the information and she could select it. She's just going to input a price. And then maybe do you want to add in a bedroom. Oh, no, that's good. All right, so now that we've inputted some basic criteria, we're going to click on that additional criteria screen. 
Now this is a really, really long list of fields because you guys have the ability to search on a lot of fields. But if I have a specific uh, field in mind, so my client is looking for specific kitchen features, I can click on Control F, or if you're using a Mac, it would be Command F, and it brings up this search box at the very top. Now this is just a browser setting, this isn't any specific uh, MLS setting, but you can just type in what you're looking for and it will highlight it on the screen. This comes into handy when you're um, looking at this uh, search criteria form. Now you'll notice that I have include and exclude checkboxes right next to my kitchen features. So my client is looking for granite corning countertops, so I'm going to include that. She's also looking for a center island, so I'm going to include that as well. And she really does not want a galley type kitchen, so I'm going to exclude that sort of criteria. Perfect. So how the search is right now, you'll see that we have 75 results. Well, right now it's reading it as an either or search. So it's looking for listings that either have a granite corning countertops or a center island or do not have a galley type. Now, my client wants to have all of these things. So what I want to change the search to um, either or to an and. So I'm going to select this require all checks. And now you'll notice my listings are now down to 16. So we can uncheck this criteria just so we can get a lot of listings. Perfect, we go to our general criteria. And let's just run the search directly from here. Perfect. And now it opens it up to our results. Something I wanna note on this screen is this display drop down at the very top. Go ahead and click on that. Now you'll notice we kept, we um, created the grids that are very similar to what you guys utilized before. So you'll see your licensee photo single line, your licensee CMA single line, and your licensee single line. So those are very similar to what you guys had before. Now I also want to notate, and we'll go over them in a few minutes, but um, you did not lose your licensee full, licensee full one page. We did recreate them. They're just going to be under reports, which I'll show you in a little bit. So let's just go ahead and click on the licensee photo single line at the very top. That as our default. Now before we jump into customizing our grid, I want to notate these icons at the very right. So when you hover over these icons, they give you a little summary of what it stands for, but I just want to go through them quickly here. So first you have your property history, so if the listing, um, you'll note if you see it, you can click on it and then you'll be able to see all of the property history for that listing. To the right of that, you'll see any tax information from Remind that's attached to the listing. And then you have your map. So if the listing is mapped, you'll see this world icon. And then pictures. And I also want to notate while we're on this one that if you click on it, it is interactive. So it'll take you to those pictures. It'll take you to the tax information directly from this grid. To the right of that, if, your list, if the listing has virtual media, you'll be able to get to it directly from this grid. And then lastly, lastly, your attached documents. So you'll be able to, um, just from this grid, be able to get some information about the listing. Now this grid really is personal, personable for you. So if I wanted to, let's just say I want to drag a column, I want to move area towards the end. Now I'm just going to left click and drag it over and it'll drop it directly in that grid. You also can expand the separate columns. So if you want to um, show all of the data or it's taking up too much space on your grid, you can expand and collapse space on that information. You also can group by. So let's go ahead and drag uh, area up to this white space at the very top. And you'll notice now it groups your listings by area. So we have three in Avenel, 12 in Cartridge. I don't know if that's how you spell it, say it, but <laughs> that would be um, that. You can group up to three, so we're also going to group by bedrooms. Let me group that to the very top. And now you'll notice it'll show however many bedrooms are in that specific area and the amount of listings. So it's just a nice way to sort through your criteria. Now, if I were to leave my grid directly like this, it will remember all of my changes. So my grouping will remain intact. If I wanted to remove it, I can click on those X X is at the very top, and it'll remove that grouping. Perfect. Now you can also sort directly from each column. So if we were to click on area at the very top, it'll sort ascending. There we go. Yeah, sorted 
with the listing to ascending. If I click it again, it'll show descending. And then if I were to click it again, it just removes the sort. So you can directly sort it from here. Now I want to go over these icons at the very top. So you have a couple of options. You have revised criteria. So if you want to do maybe narrow down the bedrooms, the bathrooms from this search, you could do that directly from the screen. If I simply wanted to view my criteria, I could click on that and it will give me a brief summary of the criteria I'm searching for. If we X that out. Perfect. And the next one to the right is show. So let's just say I'm going through my list of listings and I'm checking off the ones that I've read. I've gone through the details. Now I only want to see the ones that I've already gone through. So if I click on show and click on checked, now I'll only see those listings and I can directly email them from here because I only want to send my client the listings I've gone through. Now if we um, uncheck show, so you'll notice now that it's highlighted just signifying to you that you have listings hidden. But if we click on it and then just uncheck that, it'll show you all of the listings again. The same functionality works for remove. So if I had a couple of listings selected and I wanted to remove them, I could remove check. We're not going to click it because it'll actually remove those listings from our search results. Now, if you do happen to remove them, the only way you can get them back is just by rerunning that search. To the right of remove, you'll see sort options. So you'll notice we have it defaulted to sort by status. This is something that you can change. So if you constantly are sorting by area, uh, you can have this defaulted, which I'll show you in a few minutes. You can close this out. And then to the right of that is customized grid, which we're going to jump in a few minutes. But sh shortly, I want to show you this stats button. This will just give you some quick stats about the property. If you want to see more expansive, you can click on this uh, link at the very top and it'll bring you to our statistical summary report. So you can actually just print this report as is. If you wanted to see it more in a charts view, you can click on charts and you can see the statistics within a chart view. If you like both, you can choose that option as well, statistics and charts, and you can see all of your options here. Now, if you want to default this to be the specific chart statistic, if you utilize your statistics a lot, you can again just select that star icon, just like we did with the home page. Again, you can print or email this report. We're just going to go ahead and go back to the list. And I'll bring it directly back. Okay, next I want to go over customizing our grid. So if we click on customize grid, you'll notice this is a consistent pattern within the MLS. So whenever you have a chance to add fields or remove fields, you'll see the available fields on the, on the left and the selected fields on your right. Now, I don't want to mess with this grid because it is one of my defaults, but I want to copy it and show you how you can add some fields and remove. So Maddie clicked on that copy in the blue menu bar. She's going to add a grid name and then we're going to click OK. It's just copying our grid. Perfect. And now I can select and move thing, things around. So let's just select four fields. We're going to select fields on the right. And we're actually just going to remove them because I, I don't really look at that criteria. So I'm going to click on remove. And then if I wanted to add, so I wanted to add basement type and number of stories. I can select it on the left and then click on add at the very top. And you'll notice it added it directly here and I can move it up or down. Let's also add basement type. So you can do a control F search and just type in basement type. It'll take you to where you want to go. You can click the field and then click add. Once you've made all the changes that you want, you can click on save at the very top. And then we can go back to list to see our changes. The one thing I want to notate when you go back to list, it'll take you back to that default display. But if I click on the drop down, now I have Maddie's grid available here. And now you can see all of the new fields you've added. Awesome. Let's go ahead and do another type of search. So if we go to searches at the top and then do a quick search. So now the association has gone in and kind of narrowed down the fields on this specific screen so that if you're running more of a quick search, you can run it directly from here. She's again going to just input some criteria. It's very similar to what we just did before. 
Once we have the amount of listings, we can just click on it. Perfect, and now we have our results. So you'll notice it's in the same format as before. There's just a couple of things I want to go over. So if you want to see the full detail of the listing, you would want to click on this listing number and you'll notice it's hyperlinked and it'll link you out to the listing summary. So if you ever need to uh, access this information and you want to view the pictures in a larger format, you can go ahead and click on that. It opens you up to a gallery of the photos and you can kind of scroll through them so that you can see the photos uh, more in depth. If you need to access any of your third party links, like scheduling a showing, um, get, accessing my flood status, you can do it directly from these third party links below. And then if you wanna access the license information, you can just look here and you can get the um, agent, listing agent and the listing office information. And then below you just have all of your descriptive features. Now because we're on a list of 56, you'll have these arrows at the very top and you'll notice Maddie's just clicking on it and it'll bring you to a new listing. I want to show you guys the, what the property history looks like. So if you click on this link at the very top, you can click on the property history. And if the listing was listed multiple uh, previously, you'll see multiple listings so that you can reference that property history. If it was your listing, you have access to all of the changes. So you'll actually see many more tabs at the very top where you can reference them. And you can directly print this property history as well by just clicking on print at the very top. Go back to the screen. Perfect. Now something I want to notate um, now, which I'm sure you've been noticing as, we going, as we've been going through, is that this blue menu bar changes no matter, depending on which page you're on. This is what we like to call the action um, menu. So if you're going through and you want to see what you can do with this listing, you would want to refer to this blue menu bar.